Hi everyone, this is Sri Vatsa from Global Customer Support in Informatica. I would be making a short presentation today on how to configure Informatica for connecting to SAP and also the different types of connections that are available. So let's start with the agenda for the day. We would go over the required setup for Informatica SAP adapter, then the types of connections that are used to connect to the SAP, then where to use each type of connection. So Power Center version 910 and versions above that, they come with Power Exchange for SAP Need Fever binaries. So you don't need any separate installation for Power Exchange or SAP. So once you have installed the Power Center, you have to download the SAP RSC libraries from the SAP Marketplace. This is available under the path that I have given here. You navigate to the SAP support portal, go to software downloads, then support packages and patches, then go to browse our download catalog, then go to additional components. Under that, you will find the SAP RSC files. You can download either the Unicode version or the non-Unicode version based on your SAP system. You also need to download an executable called SAP CAR, under the additional components directory. This is used to extract the compressed RFC SDK files. I will give a short demo on how to run that. So I have placed all the downloaded files in the SAP NSC RFC folder. The way to run it is you give the executable name first, followed by minus XVF, and then followed by that, you give the dot SAR file that you downloaded. Once you do that, it extracts everything under a folder called RFC SDK. And you find all the files that are required under RFC SDK slash bin. It also, additional, it also has additional utilities like RFC ping and RFC pass, which may, you may want to use and test the connections. So once these libraries are downloaded, they need to be placed in the client bin directory. So once you have placed these files under the client slash bin directory, you have to register, uh, make a registry, registry entry uh, to know where the libraries are located. So for that, you need to click on this file called pwx underscore sap.reg if it, your client machine is a 32-bit machine. If it is a 64-bit machine, then you need to make the registry entry by clicking on pwx underscore sap underscore 64.reg. Once this is done, your power center client can start importing data sources. So in the source analyzer, if you go to the sources, you will have these options, SAP functions, import from SAP, import from SAP BW. These options wouldn't be available until or unless you download this RFC libraries and then click on those .reg files. You will additionally also have options under mappings tab to clean ABA program information, generate and install SAP R3 code, and then generate DCA mapping. So this is the configuration that you do with the client. Similarly, you download the RSC libraries from the SAP marketplace for the server environment, and then move those files to the server slash bin environment. And there are no more changes that are required on the server side. So now let's take a look at what are, what are the configurations that we need to make. So the next part is installing the transport. We have a separate presentation on installing the transports. You may want to refer to it in the infra support directory. Here I would provide information on where you can get these transports. It's available under the SAP trans slash mysap or SAP trans slash pw directory, which is part of the server installer. So once the transports are installed, we will move to the next step. 
it is configuration of the SAP RFC data in file. There is an environment variable called RFC underscore INI that needs to be set. This points to the directory where your SAP RFC data INI file would be saved. So in my case, the RFC underscore INI points to the SYS WOW64 directory sense minus a 64 bit machine. So if your environment doesn't have this RFC underscore INI variable, you will have to configure it to make it point to the uh, SAP RFC dot INI file. Power Center client makes use of this to read the entries in the SAP RFC dot INI file. If your server is also running on a 64 bit Windows machine, you need to specify the RFC underscore INI variable. If your server is on a Unix based machine, then it will automatically pick it up from the server slash bin directory. So once the RFC INA environment variable has been set up, we come to the last part of the setup. There is this plugin file called pmsaptlt.xml. If you are migrating from a version below 9.1.0 to version 9.1.0 and above, you need to register this plugin. You also need to register this native plugin if you want to avail of the new functionalities that have been added in 91HF3 versions onwards. So I will give a short demo on how to register this plugin. So to register the plugin, you need to run your repository in exclusive mode, go to the repository service, and then set the operating mode to exclusive. Once you are done with that, you can uh, log into your server machine and then connect to the repository, which is in the exclusive mode, and then run the register plugin. So you can get into the PM rep, rep prompt first and run the connect command to the connect to the repository with the username and password. Now it's connected. Now you can run the register plugin command. So the command goes like register plugin minus i, then the location of PMSAP PLG.xml, which is under server bin native directory then minus e minus m so i'll be running the register plugin command right now if you run this command it will import a couple of libraries and some of data types and then it says register plugin completed successfully so once this is done you can set your repository back to the normal mode so once the SAP PLG.xml file is registered, your configuration required on the side of Power Center is complete to connect to the SAP adapter. So now let's look at the types of connection that we use to connect to the SAP. We have three types of connections. One is type R, type B, and type A. Type R connection is the one that you use to register an RFC server program in SAP Gateway. Type A and Type B are used when you import a data source. And also, when, when you want to run the session, you give a Type A and Type B connection for all your data sources. So in order to configure um, your SAP RFC data entry correctly, and also run the sessions properly, you may want to take a look at the KBs 21292 and 22009. These are KB is related to certain changes that you need to make in your ETC host or Windows System 32 drivers ETC file. Um, so SAP requires some of these entries to be entered in the services file. So you might, for the Unix system, you'll find under ETC slash services. And for Windows, you will find under Windows System 32 drivers ETC. And then you'll find the services file. So you may want to refer to the KV that I mentioned and add all the entries that are meant for it. So let's look at what a type B has. A type B has a requires a host name of the message server, then a group name for all the application servers, and then the name of the SAP system where the message server is configured. 
and for type a it is a lot more straightforward you just specify the host name of the http application server and then you can give the system number the gw host and gw scrv are optional optional in, with regards to type a connection so the way it works is it connects based on your host name followed by the port number the port number is identified by reading from the services file so the gw scrv would be identified something like sap gw 00 or sap gw 01 and that will map to a port number uh, in which the gateway service is listening so those are the configurations that you need to make with regards to sap rfp data in file let me show a sample SAP RFC data NA file that I have configured. So I have a type A, type B, and a type R connection. My type A has destination, which is what it identifies it with. Then your A source is system number. Then your type R has a program ID. The program ID is the uh, program ID is the one that uh, an RFC server program uses to register itself under SAP gateway. This is created using your SM59 transaction. Then you have type B, which has a host name, message server host name, then the group name. So this is a sample of SAP RFC data NA file. You may want to discuss with your SAP basis admin on how to configure it. So now let's look at where to use each type of connection. You would use a type A or type B connection when you import data sources in the client, power center client from an SAP RFC system. Or from SAP BW system, or when you create an IDAC interpreter or IDAC proper transformation, you need to import the metadata, or when you create an BAP ER RFC transformation, or you activate a data source using a DCA mapping wizard, which is one of the component of Power Exchange for SAP NetWeaver. So, this type A type B connection should also be configured using different connector types in the session which I would come to later. So now let's look at where type R would be used. Type R would be used only in these two cases. When you configure an SAP BW service in the administration console, you need to specify the program ID or the destination for the type R entry. When you create a listener for business content integration, you have a BCF framework, which is one of the component of our exchange for SAP NetWeaver. Under that, you will have a listener session for the listener session, you have to configure a type R connection. So both these cases, we create run an RFC server program and we register at the SAP gateway. So in every other case, you use a type A or type B connection. So one thing to note is you can have multiple BW services for the same type R connection for the sake of load balancing. But if you configure listener, each listener has to have an individual type R connection, which means each listener has to um, have a different logical system created in the SM59 transaction. So now let's look at what connectors to use in Power Center for this. For type A or type B, you will use SAP R3. Uh, for SAP RFC slash BAP interface, also you can use a type A or type B. There are certain connectors for which you use only type A. And that is SAP ALE IDAC Writer, SAP BW OHS Reader, SAP BW. And then there is only one for which you would configure a type R, and that is SAP ALE IDAC Reader, which would be used in the listener session. The other place where you use a type R is the SAP BW service. And there you don't need a session connection, it runs as a service in the admin console. So, so to sum up, first of all, we went through the setup required for informatic SAP adapter, and then we saw the types of connections and where to use each type of connection, and then what connections for different connectors to use in the power center session. I hope this information was useful to you. Please provide your feedback to us under info support videos, and also your valuable feedbacks at twitter.com slash infosupport. Thank you.